Meghan Markle has written an op-ed opinion piece in the New York Times, and I think we should read it because uh, it's just chock full of interesting tidbits, uh, and then we'll do a reading on it. So it's titled Opinion, Meghan the Duchess of Sussex. So she's still going by her title, Duchess of Sussex, the losses we share. So she didn't say Meghan Markle. Uh, perhaps the path to healing begins with three simple words, are you okay? Okay, this is actually a stroke of genius. She is owning the are you okay statement because in Africa, when that's what that's what kicked off the firestorm that resulted in Meghan and Harry leaving the royal family and Harry saying, well, I didn't really want it to turn out this way. You know, we really kind of had no choice. We're either in or we're out. Uh, so are you okay at the end of the Africa tour? Let's read it. It was a July morning that began as ordinary as any other day. Make breakfast, feed the dogs. Megan doesn't make her own breakfast. Megan shouldn't feed her own dogs. Take vitamins, find that missing sock. They have cooks, they have chefs. Pick up the rogue crayon that rolled under the table. They have nannies. Throw my hair in a ponytail before getting my son from his crib. Okay, after changing his diaper, Maybe she would do this. Maybe she wouldn't. I felt a sharp cramp. I dropped to the floor with him, Archie. It's strange she doesn't name Archie. Humming a lullaby to keep us both calm. The cheerful tune, a stark contrast to my sense that something was not right. I knew as I clutched my firstborn child that I was losing my second. Okay, she doesn't mention any other people around. There's there's nannies. Uh, there's Harry. She didn't mention Harry. She didn't mention nannies. She didn't mention any other staff. Hours later, I lay in a hospital bed holding my husband's hand. Finally, she mentions Harry, but she doesn't name him. She doesn't name Archie. She doesn't name Harry. I felt the clamminess of his palm and kissed his knuckles, wet from both our tears. Staring at the cold white walls, my eyes glazed over. I tried to imagine how we'd deal. Finally, she's going to name him. I recalled a moment last year when Harry, she finally names him, and I were finishing up a long tour in South Africa. Megan was in South Africa because of Harry, so it's good she named him. I was exhausted. I was breastfeeding our infant son, and I was trying to keep a brave face in the very public eye. How many eyes were there in this? She was breastfeeding their infant son. Remember this? Uh, she... There was a lot made out of Megan breastfeeding Archie. She took a trip with to to see Serena Williams play at the New York Open. Serena Williams herself says, "I wouldn't have even left my infant to to do what you're doing," uh, and it seemed like sort of a backhanded compliment. Serena won. Megan had skin knees. She had very strange body language towards Serena's very wealthy husband, and Serena's mother. Uh, was just really ignoring Megan. Are you okay? A journalist asked me. <laughs> was it Tom Bradby? I answered him honestly, not knowing that what I said would resonate with so many new moms and older ones and anyone who had in their own way been silently suffering. My off-the-cuff reply seemed to give people permission to speak their truth. That was not off-the-cuff. This was very carefully planned uh, and... This is a stroke of public relations genius because this is what kicked off Mexit. This is what kicked off their exit from the royal family, and she's owning it. This is the theme of what she's written here. But I wasn't responding honestly. It wasn't responding honestly that helped me most. It was the question itself. Thank you for asking, I said. Not many people have asked if I'm okay. Isn't OK spelled wrong here? O-K-A-Y. Sitting in a hospital bed, watching my husband's heart break as he tried to hold the shattered pieces of mine. Again, he's not Harry. She, he's her husband. I realized that the only way to begin to heal is to first ask, are you OK? Are we? This year has brought so many of us to our breaking points. OK, now she's taking her pain and she's going to expand it out to uh, the world's uh Pet loss and pain, another stroke of genius. Loss and pain have plagued every one of us 
in 2020. In moments both fraught and debilitating, we've heard all the stories. A woman starts her day as normal as any other, but then receives a call that she's lost her elderly mother. A man wakes feeling fine, maybe a little sluggish, but nothing out of the ordinary. He tests positive for the the Wu flu, and within weeks, he, like hundreds of thousands of others, has passed. A young woman named Brianna Taylor goes to sleep, just as she's done every night before, but she doesn't live to see the morning because a police raid turns horribly wrong. She's very partisan, and she's aligning her pain with the universal pain that everyone has felt and with these political issues. It's, uh, it's very clever. George Floyd leaves a convenience store, not realizing he will take his last breath under the weight of someone's knee, and in his final moments, calls out for his mom. Peaceful protests become violent. Health rapidly shifts to sickness. In places where there was once community, there is now division. On top of all this, we, it seems we no longer agree on what is true. We aren't just fighting over our opinions of, fa of facts. We're polarized over whether the fact is, in fact, a fact. Well said. We are at odds over whether science is real. We are at odds over whether an election has been won or lost. We are not at odds over whether science is real. We are at odds over the fact that people scream science, and that's not at all what they mean. Uh, we are at odds over the value of compromise. That polarization coupled with the social isola isolation required to fight this Wu flu has left us feeling more alone than ever. When I was in my late teens, I sat in the back. Okay, so now she goes into this this woman, how compassionate she is. Megan is very compassionate. She Everybody takes their shoes off. She makes you hot tea and, and feeds you snacks. Uh, all right. Now, all these years later, in isolation and lockdown, grieving the loss of a child, the loss of my country's shared belief in what is true. I think of that woman in New York. What if no one stopped? What if no one saw her suffering? What if no one helped? I wish I could go back and ask my cab driver to pull over. This, I realized, is the danger of siloed living, where moments sad, scary, and sacrosanct are all lived out alone. There's no one stopping to ask, are you okay? I'm glad she went over the eighth grade level of reading and, and used the word siloed and sacrosanct. That's nice. Losing a child means carrying an almost unbearable grief. Okay, is she asking for sympathy? Is this a plea for sympathy? Experienced by many, but talked about by few. In the pain of our loss, my husband and I discovered that in a room of 100 women, 10 to 20 of them will have suffered from a miscarriage. Yes, even as a child, uh, the ladies, when I growing up, I knew that many, many of the ladies around me, even as a small child, had had miscarriages because they would they would talk about it. Yet despite the staggering commonality of this pain, the conversation remains taboo, riddled with unwarranted shame and perpetuating a cycle of solitary mourning. I doubt that anybody's ashamed of this. Some have bravely shared their stories. They've opened the door, knowing that when someone speaks the truth, okay. So this Thanksgiving, as we plan for a holiday Unlike any before, many of us separated from our loved ones, alone, sick, scared, divided uh, in New York and in, uh, and in California. They have forbidden, I think, more than eight people to commute, to get together. You know, so if you have like nine people in your family, you're not allowed to have Thanksgiving. It's really weird and people are protesting and they should. Let us commit to asking others, are you okay? She's owning it. As much as we may disagree, as physically distanced as we may be, the truth is that we are more connected than ever because all we have is individually, individually and collectively endured this year. She's really throwing her pain in with yours, and she's saying her pain is your pain and your pain is her pain. We're adjusting to a new normal, that's a hot phrase, where faces are concealed by masks, but it's forcing us to look into one another's eye, eyes, sometimes filled with warmth, other times with tears. For the first time in a long time, as human beings, we are really seeing one another. Are we okay? We will be. Very well written. I sincerely doubt that she wrote this herself. I have many questions. Now, uh, the public square is Twitter. 
And earlier today, I was on Twitter and I was looking and it was a 50-50 split between people who were very, had very negative things to say about Megan and her miscarriage, which is interesting. And then 50% who were just hyperbolically positive, uh, you know, and really just ranting uh, hatefully how how can anybody say anything nasty about this? So it was definitely a 50-50 split. Now, I've just gone through again, and the comments have clearly been curated, and it's all positive. It's only the positive comments that have remained. All of the negative comments have been weeded out by Twitter, which is not free speech. So let me read you just one. For a woman who has endured such hate and negativity to share such a raw vulnerability is an incredible act of courage. Voicing these shared experiences throws light on the shadows of shame and lifts the weight of silence. Meghan Markle, the losses we share. That's very positive towards Meghan Markle, but look at the words she uses. This is Kate Jarman. Hate and negativity. How can you be positive when you use the words hate and negativity? Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. Time for a spot of royalty. So did Megan have a miscarriage? I mean, if she did, I mean, that's a really big deal. I mean, the baby grows inside the woman and then she literally feels that she lost, lost a piece of herself. Uh, and, you know, with regard to the man or Harry in this case, you know, there's so much promise in a child and, you know, you look forward to raising the child and the child will become, uh, you know, this, this little independent human person uh, over time. And, and there's just so much investment. So we just need to look at this. And I do, I find it incredibly interesting how the, the Twitter comments were curated and all negative comments were removed. Uh, because it was a 50-50 split and maybe the negative comments were winning. And I really wanted to read you some of each because they were very interesting. And that is the pulse of what people were thinking. So let's check in with Megan. Is Megan okay? Is she grieving the loss of a miscarried child? Okay, is she now grieving the, and this is from July, it's now November, but is Megan grieving the loss of her miscarried child? Let's check in with her. Are you okay, Megan? How, how are you? How is Megan? Okay. Hand in hand. Many people. Broken chalice. Coffin. Coffin here definitely suggests a death. Possibly a miscarriage. Uh, separated. I don't understand six diamonds. This is many people. Okay, so the center of this spread is many people. Right on, on the mind is the whole world. And many people. So, this is for the world's eyes. Okay, this narrative is for the world's eyes. In the center is all the people who listen to Megan and would be fascinated this. So a death and a loss, miscarriage, separation, loss, uh, and pain for the many people. So this, these cards are saying that this is really for the many people. Snake, snake is uh, it's all the internal organs. So, uh, you know, a baby is inside the woman's body. So that's, you know, behind possibly, uh, here in the future, we have the home card. Okay. People close to you and family mustard seed and roses. Okay. So, this could be planting a family. So this could say that she is planning to have a second child. They are planning to have a second child and build their foundation. So it seems like this narrative 
I can't tell if she actually had a, a miscarriage here, but the narrative in the New York Times is for the eyes of the many people. This suggests that, you know, maybe this happened. They are planning to have another child. That's what this says. We're going to, let's just ask, do Megan and Harry want to have a second, are they planning to have a second child? Okay, because this outcome says to me that they, it looks like they are. And they could be feeling very differently about it. Megan should be like, Meg, what Megan wants, Megan gets. And Harry could be like, there's just nothing I can do. Uh, I really don't want to have a second child. Or he could be like, heck yeah, I want a second child. You know, because for me, marriage is about having a family and having, you know, at least four kids for, you know, as far as that's how I see it. So let's look at Megan and Harry. Are they currently planning to have a second child? Which the first one was by surrogate. This is Megan. Harry. Interesting. Wow. Look at that. Are they currently planning to have a second child? Harry does want another child. Here's a two right in the middle. He, he, he loves it. Uh, 25, 27, family, you know, adding to the family. Uh, he's on board. He feels that he's leading. It's interesting, all the mail cards. And it's interesting that Harry got the Mother Earth. So, yeah, he does want another child. Uh, so, on Megan's side, Angel, this is a child. Man, angel, reacting to the man and another child. 24 plus 5, 29, 8 hearts. Pregnancy or water into wine. So, yeah. They both want another child. Which I think is new because I think they weren't ready for another child. Earthquake and cup overflowing. Uh, terminated pregnancy, 20. Blocked and terminated pregnancy. So this could say... Uh, this could say uh, miscarriage. Ten hearts and ten spades could say this looks like miscarriage. So did Megan literally have a miscarriage? Okay, because a lot of... I don't believe that Megan is capable of having, of carrying a child to term. She's older. I think she's had a lot of abortions she, or several abortions. It only takes one. Uh, but she never wanted a child, and I think she did everything she could to make sure she didn't have a child. She had a, an extensive agreement with Trevor Engelson, her husband, that if she ever got pregnant, he would have to pay for yoga and weight loss and all kinds of fitness stuff for her just to bring her back. That was like a contract that she wrote as part of the marriage. So did Megan have, let's just ask directly, because there's several cards here that indicate that she may have had a miscarriage, that she actually did. Okay, now, even if she's not really able to carry a child to term, she could have gotten pregnant and had a miscarriage. It's an oopsie, like, oh, I can't have kids, but she got pregnant and then there was a miscarriage. So this could all be true, but Megan could be completely, really incapable of carrying a child to term. But on the other hand, doctors are always will say things like, you can't carry a child to term, and then the woman has five kids after that. Okay, and Megan could be somebody like that. So did Megan actually have a miscarriage? Because it's entirely possible. Executioner. Did she actually carry, have a miscarriage? Executioners, this is the doctor card. 23, 28, seven spades. Seven spades can be the womb. Uh, two or more things could happen. Two or more paths and over the long term. And this is a very heavy card. The burden was cut and went in another direction. The 
burden of the, the burden in the womb, seven spades, was cut and went in another direction. So this actually says to me that she did have, uh, she literally did have a miscarriage. This is absolutely true. Full stop. Cast out. Okay, eight spades is the abortion card. Okay, or the the loss of pregnancy. Okay, cast out of the of the tree of the olive tree, like the tree of life, cast out of the mother's body and stopped and heart and inheritance, you know, uh, a baby as a new baby as part of the a beginning baby as part of the inheritance. So yes, she actually did. She, this is absolutely true. She did have a miscarriage. She did have a miscarriage. So, and like I said, this could be an oopsie. This could be like her not believing that she's physically capable of carrying a child to term. So is Meghan Markle capable? Is she physically able to carry a child to term? Okay, a baby in her womb. Is she physically able to carry a child to term? Megan physically able to carry a child to room term. This is uh, the creation of a baby, eight hearts, water into wine, trans. So finger of God introduced from outside and Fox is a good doctoring card. 27 cross the permanent family. Sevens are eternal. Eights are everything. So with a doctor's help, uh, it looks like she can. She can bear a child. Okay, that's right on the surface. So here underneath, we have strength, diamond ring, things have changed, cross and two clubs, uh, bearing the child in her body. Uh, and it looks like she can bear a child in her body. I actually did not think she was able to carry a child in her body. But with a doctor's help, I think the baby will be formed outside of the womb. And then, you know, like, I don't know what that's called, in, in vitro. And then they'll in vitro fertilize her with a fertilized egg. And then she grows it in her womb. So she is able, with a doctor's help, she is able to carry this child. Okay, which is news to me. I actually thought, you know, I thought that's why they did the surrogate business the first time. So that's, this is very interesting. So what, what do we have here? Let's check in with Megan. Is she, how, how are you, Megan? How, how are you? Are, is, is she grieving? Well, she's past her grief stage. She's past her grief stage and they're looking forward to building their family. Okay, this, she's past the grief at this time. Okay, it was July, it's November, she's just past it. Now, I do know ladies who, even when I was a child, would talk about their lost, uh, their miscarried children, and, you know, like buried on the property. Like I had a friend, he, he lived on 12 acres, and we would ride his horses, and get up to other shenanigans. And uh, the, his brother, his miscarried brother, I think it was a brother, is buried on the property. Uh, and the mother, you know, that was shared with me. And, and, you know, that's not unusual. Not unusual. In fact, all, all three of my best friends growing up, their mothers had miscarriages at some point. Okay, but they all had other children. Okay, so like the one where the kid was buried on the property, that she ended up having eight kids. The another one, they had six kids, but one miscarried. And another one, she had two kids, but one miscarried. So it was very common. So this writing in the New York Times, this is for the public. This is for the public. She's over it. Uh, this is a great anything dealing with the internal workings of the body, like a pregnancy. The snake is a perfect card for this. Plus, that's the symbol of medicine. Okay, so in the past, she was pregnant. 
okay, but she's looking forward to building her family now. She's completely over it. She's not still grieving this, not actively grieving this. Are they looking, are Harry and Meghan looking to having another child? Absolutely, both of them. And here's the miscarriage, okay? Very suspicious cards for a miscarriage. This is, cup overflowing is the birth card. A devastating ending to a birth. Miscarriage, literally, 10 hearts, 10 spades. So, you know, kind of keep that in mind. I finally asked, did Megan literally have a miscarriage? Yeah, the burden was cut, severed. And, and scapegoat is the miscarriage or abortion card cast out of the, of the body of the mother, full stop. And yeah, there was a baby. There was a baby there. Okay, and finally, is she physical, physically capable? She is actually capable of, with a doctor's assistance, she is capable of carrying this child in her body. So that's really something. And I think maybe that's a step that Megan is, is ready to take now. She wants to have this experience and, you know, good on her. Uh, good on her. So that's how I see it. I'm Joseph Magi, author of Playing Card Divination, Fortune Telling, The Magi Method. Find the book worldwide on Amazon and Kindle and paperback versions. Find the full color card deck used here on Etsy slash Magi Method. Many thanks to the generous folks who bought me a cup of tea. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment.